Hey, this is Nick Kinney at the North Plains Groundwater Conservation District's Water Conservation Center, introducing the second installment of our virtual field day and giving you an update of where we are at the end of October. So today's the 29th of October. Uh, we are in our second day of harvesting our corn plots. We were able to wrap up all of the subsurface drip uh, plots, which we had a population study on last evening. And today we're in the midst of getting all of the plot work squared away, our different hybrids, uh, different fertilizer rates, and a comparison between uh, other couple small management schemes on our, our corn underneath the east pivot here at the center. Um, we're about a week away from cotton harvest, also on the drip and the uh, sprinkler. Um, too early to tell exactly what we're looking at, but uh, we're approaching harvest. I'd be happy to give some specifics on, on irrigation. I'll have to use my cheat sheet to make sure we get the numbers right. Uh, the real numbers is the correlation between yield and water applied, but to this point we do have our water applied numbers. Um, we terminated irrigation on the corn um, the 14th of September. On the drip we had approximately 15 inches applied. And then on the pivot we wrapped up on the 14th of September uh, through the 21st of September. That was our last full round on that and ended up with 19 and a half inches of applied irrigation water on the pivot. So we end up with 15 inches on the drip and just shy of 20 inches on, on the pivot. And then we're, we're at the point now where we're tallying the late season soil moisture extraction. Uh, it looks like the gross soil moisture extraction is going to be basically zero. We had some very heavy late season rainfall, which isn't cer certainly going to be, uh, uh, it's not going to be detrimental, uh, but it's not really going to contribute much to the water applied to the crop during the season, mostly because it was already uh, towards the end of, of terminating both the cotton and the corn crops there. Yeah, it looks like when it's all said and done, we're going to have a, a zero contributor from soil moisture. That's a little bit of a, a disingenuous statement because the soil moisture carried us for multiple times during the year. We were able to extract it and draw it down quite a bit, but we started with a full profile and essentially end with a full profile. Um, we're going to do a dig on both the cotton and the corn pivots to see how deep the light water penetrated. Um, we dug down to a, a depth of past eight feet to figure out our beginning soil moisture. And then we'll see what it looks like at the end of the season to see if uh, one in the cotton, if we've gotten deep water extraction, and then in the corn to see how much of that profile we recharged with the, the late rains as, as the corn was senescing. So we'll start with the drip cotton where we had uh, the Texas AgriLife race study as well as the irrigation study that we were looking at there. Uh, we had two different ir irrigation regimes. It was to basically mimic what it would be like to irrigate uh, a full season cotton versus a cotton plant that was sharing water with corn. And so the cotton that was irrigated to its, what we would consider the, the full capacity, received approximately eight inches of irrigation water while the cotton that was irrigated split in water with corn was about half that. We were in the four and a half inches applied range. And that irrigation terminated again in mid-September. Let me add a little comment to that as well. We had a late start this season because of a, a cool uh, end of spring. And so we were really trying to, to push cotton into the fall. And so we ended up irrigating cotton into the second week of September, which was against what our strategy was and against what's normal just on the hope that that last little bit of irrigation would give it a boost as needed. The cotton was very aggressive in September. It had drawn down the soil moisture. It had used water uh, very well. The challenge, of course, is we, we know we got a frost date in the middle of October. If we had been able to push that frost date off a week or two weeks, we would have been really happy with that last irrigation. But as it stands, we probably didn't get much gain on that last uh, applied irrigation in, in September. I don't think it hurt our yields or hurt anything per se that way, except for it was a little bit extra pumped water that uh, probably we would have rather not pumped if we know what we know now. But all the projections pointed towards a warm fall, so we wanted to capture that if possible. Um, let me grab a note here on the, the pivot just to make sure we're, we're talking the same numbers. Our pivot, uh, our last irrigation there was the 13th through 16th of September ended up with a total applied of nine and a quarter inches of, of irrigation water across the pivot cotton. And if you were to compare the two visually, the, the cotton on the pivot looks a little better. It received a little bit more water than the cotton on the drip, but they were under different 
management regimes for, for different purposes and different reasons. Our last irrigation events at the Water Cons Conservation Center occurred in the middle of September. Since then, there's been a handful of things we've been working on. Mostly we've been waiting for harvest. And so we've been allowing the grain to dry down uh, to mid-17s, which is where it's at today when we're harvesting the corn. So the West Pivot at the Water Conservation Center is devoted to cotton this year. We've got a couple of uh, demonstrations going on. One is a cover crop study that Jordan Bell is operating. The other one is a population study where we looked at very large plots with multiple different populations in cotton. And our objective going in was to try to push the scale forward to see if we increase plant populations, can we control runaway at the end of the season? And so we went up to 110,000 plants per acre dropped. And that was what we were doing right at planting. And then we got rained on and then we got a cold front come in. What we ended up with was a population study that basically looked at the lower end of the spectrum. We were looking at plantings from essentially 20,000 uh, plants per acre up to 55,000 plants per acre. So it took our whole spectrum from the top end to the bottom end. And so there's interesting things to look at, but that wasn't exactly as designed. The challenge that regionally occurred with the impacts of that cold, wet uh, close of spring right at, at cotton planting is that many growers were forced to consider replanting, either replanting cotton, they were forced to replant to a grain crop. What we did at the center is we stuck it out and we went ahead and uh, stuck with the cotton planting since it was a population study, since we had devoted to it, and if we did any replanting, it would compromise that approach. Um, things that we found regionally, and this is a, a challenge this year, is that many of the folks who planted their corn late following uh, a failed cotton crop if they didn't plant a short enough season crop, uh, they were affected dramatically by the frost that occurred in the middle of October. And just the same, some of the guys who went back in and planted a second cotton crop to have an older crop and a younger crop side by side. Time will tell how that pans out, but I think those later crops are gonna time out. So you're gonna have the early stuff, which is gonna be effective and have good quality, good maturity, but the younger stuff, we're gonna have to see how that really does contribute to the yield. And we'll be able to know whether it was worth the expense and the effort of replanting. We'll be able to know uh, should this situation arise again, we can draw back and say this is what it looked like the spring of 2019. We've got a lot of data on what occurred and we'll have a lot of uh, response in terms of the economics of it and the viability of what that follow-up crop should look like. What we've seen that's somewhat exciting is that the cotton that we stuck with has pushed through and we're not going to harvest what we would consider uh, a perfect scenario cotton, but we're going to be in the two and a half to three bales on a lot of this farm uh, at the Water Conservation Center, that is, uh, which is going to end up being pretty equitable, especially given the circumstances and given the fact that we didn't have added costs of, of replanting. Um, the other end of the spectrum, which has been a challenge, is that the frost that came in in October, in effect, was a week to two weeks earlier than we would have liked. It's not uncommon necessarily, but it was a deep enough frost on a one-time event that was shrouded by warm days that it's easy to say, uh, if I had my druthers, I'd have rather that day been absent. We could have finished much stronger with, with our cotton. We were able to carry big bowls late into the season. And there's still a handful of bowls here at the last week of October that, that may pop open just enough to be able to harvest the lint out of uh, prior to our harvest, which we're anticipating to occur the first week of, of November. But what I will say with all of this is we've got pretty good records across the board, lots of documentation, a lot of comparisons, a lot of demonstrations will be delay back and forth and on top of each other so we can see truly what the results of 2019 are.